What's up guys, welcome back to The Educated Barfly. It's October and that means that it's Applejack Month. We decided we would celebrate National Applejack Month with five cocktails utilizing this amazing spirit. And also for those of you that are interested, stick around at the end and we will give you a little bit of history on America's first distilled spirit. All right, first cocktail up is a Pall Mall. Now, the Pall Mall was first published in a book called Shake 'Em Up in 1930, written by Virginia Elliott and a dude named Phil D. Stong. Um, it is one of those cocktails that is not only from the 1930s, but has such a satisfyingly 1930s name, the Pall Mall after the cigarettes. I love it. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh, two orange wedges and a couple dashes of Angostura bitters, put it into the uh, tin, and then we're gonna muddle it. Now you wanna muddle the meat, but don't get too much of the peel because you don't wanna impart too, bit too much bitterness from the pith. Then we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of grenadine. I am using house-made grenadine today. Three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. We're gonna do uh, an ounce of rye, and we're using 100 proof, written house rye. Bonded, bottled and bond, one of my faves. And then we're gonna do an ounce of Applejack, also bottled and bond, also 100 proof. Well, if it's bottled and bond, it's 100 proof, guys. Add our ice. Give it a good lock and give it a shake. Unlock our nicely locked tin, and this one is definitely gonna have to be double strained because we have some fruit bits in there. You don't want to get the fruit bits into the glass. You just want to get the cocktail in the glass. Let's taste it. This is my favorite part of the show. Ooh, tastes like fall. October is one of those months where you know you're in fall. It's Halloween, it's apple picking season. When I, I, was, grow, when I was growing up, I grew up in New England. When I was growing up, we went apple picking. It was one of my absolute favorite things to do. And this just tastes like that. You get the orange and the ango together right off the bat. You get that nice citrus pop that is helped by the citrusy of the uh, citrusiness of the lemon juice. I don't know if citrusiness is an actual word, but lemon juice kind of helps it with that sharpness of flavor. Um, I guess lime would be sharper, but you know the lemon is like very sharp, and then the orange. The orange is like kind of sweet, but like there's not too much orange in here, and that's helped by the spiciness of the rye. And then just sort of like that kind of like, I guess, savory apple kind of flavor. Another thing that I really like about this cocktail is that it utilizes rye, which is the very first uh, American distilled whiskey. And this is the, and then the Applejack is the first American distilled spirit at all. Um, so you have like two of the oldest spirits in this cocktail. Uh, so there you guys have it, the Pall Mall. All right, next cocktail up is called an Ottoman Jersey. It was created by Anthony Schmidt of the Noble Experiment around 2010. The Noble Experiment is a speakeasy down in San Diego that makes amazing drinks. Uh, although it's not much of a speakeasy because it's not a secret. And it's not a secret because they make amazing drinks. Uh, so if you want to go there, the next time you're in San Diego, you're going to have to get a reservation a couple days in advance. All right, let's get into this cocktail. This is a very simple one and a very, very satisfying one. First thing we're going to do is just a couple of dashes of Angostura bitters. Three quarters of an ounce of orja, which is almond syrup, I house made. Three quarters of an ounce of lemon. And then we're just gonna do two ounces of Applejack. We're gonna give it just like a little, I wanna just do like a half an ounce of ice. Uh, and you can feel free to shake it until it's fully diluted, uh, completely gone, because we're just getting that chill. I don't know, I said it once, I'll say it again. Get in the chill, get in the dilution. And then we're just gonna pour it in. And you got, see how it's like nicely aerated and very foamy. And then we're just gonna add our pebble on top. Now, some people really will see what I'm doing here and say like, oh, you're putting too much ice in it. And I just wanna tell you that there's no such thing as putting too much ice. Um, you wanna pack your drink in ice because the more surface area of drink that touches ice, the less dilution you will get. I know that it sounds counterintuitive to say that putting more ice in something is gonna lead to less water uh, in your cocktail, but since you pre-chilled this cocktail by shaking it, um, you, you, you are controlling that dilution a bit. And then also, as it dilutes, like you also want, you didn't add a ton of dilution to begin with. You only added a little bit. 
to get the flavors mixed and then also to, and to get the chill going. So like, since this is gonna be sitting on crushed ice, it's what you do. Basically all that ice is to have it keep its composure for as long as possible. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, let's take a sip. There are very few things in this life that are better than the combination of orgia and lemon. Uh, you know, the orgia is that almond, it's basically like an almond milk with the addition of a little orange flower water and a little sugar. And it is sweet, but it's in sweet, almost like honey in this sort of savory way. Not as sweet as honey though. And then you add that to lemon, you get the sharpness of the lemon and you have the perfectly balanced sweetness from the orgia. And that sharpness of flavor is really good. Nicely supported from the Angostura bitters, giving it that nice little kind of tropical spice right in the end. This is a very well-balanced cocktail. It will definitely make it into, into your, your cocktail rotation because it is just so satisfyingly good that when you drink it, you're gonna be satisfied. And then the other thing that's wonderful about this is that that mint pop, you know, like you kind of give that mint a little crushy poo before you put it in. You know, it kind of has that like mint vibe to it. Oh man, it's so good. That is a wonderful cocktail. So there you have it, my friends, the autumn in Jersey. Cocktail number three, we've got the Black Mamba. Black Mamba is the world's most deadliest snake. The most deadliest? The world's most deadliest? The world's most deadly snake, possibly. People think it's the world's most deadly snake. Since we are in October and it is very close to Halloween, I thought, why not make some deadly cocktails? Uh, obviously, uh, we are going to be doing, there is, there is Applejack in this cocktail, but I will say that it's a little bit of a cheat cocktail. It doesn't have that much Applejack in it. There's a, only a little bit of Applejack. It's not the main spirit in this cocktail, but I just wanted to show you some uh, variety of what uh, can be done with Applejack uh, in other cocktails. So sometimes it is the main ingredient and sometimes it is a supporting character, but like Philip Seymour Hoffman has told us, has taught us that supporting characters are just as, if not more important than the main ones. All right, let's get into making the drink. So first thing we're gonna do is three quarters of an ounce of lemon. One ounce of this uh, mold wine, so house mold wine. I put together the spices myself and uh, you will have to look below for the recipe on this one. I'm gonna do one ounce of mold wine. One ounce of gin. Full disclosure, uh, Stephanie, when she first made this cocktail, was made with um, with uh, Bombay Sapphire, but I am using uh, Plymouth because it is what I have on hand and I really like it. I think it's gonna go very, very smashingly. Half an ounce of Applejack, quarter ounce of Fernet. Just a little, little dab will do it. Add our ice. Add our cocktail and give it a nice shake. All right, we're gonna be straining into our glass. And then we are going to be crushy pooing a little and just floating this on top like so. Oh, I gotta say, why? I don't, I'm not really digging this. I'm not really digging this, Marius. There you go. That's nice, right? That's nice. Um, wine is a really underutilized ingredient in cocktails. This cocktail is just so um, deep and rich. It has all those mulling spices. The Applejack actually supports it. You know, I would think that the mulling spices inside the wine would actually make it a little bit I don't know, it would make it a little bit uh, too flavorful to really taste the Applejack, but actually the Applejack is really good in there. You got a nice little tinge of bitterness from the Fernet. I'm gonna say it's gonna tend toward the sweeter side, you know, because the because of the sugar in the mulled wine, but it's not overly sweet. It is really well balanced. It's got a nice sharpness from the lemon. So there you have it, my friends, the Black Mamba. Next cocktail up, Legends of the Fall. The Legends of the Fall cocktail was created by Joshua Michael James of Middle Branch in New York City. It, I chose this cocktail because it's like, it's, it's fall in a glass. It's just like nutty, it's spicy, it's an old fashioned variation. Uh, I really tried very hard in this video to give you a lot of different styles of things and this one is really awesome. That being said, and by awesome I meant satisfying. 
But that being said, uh, it also shares a name with one of my favorite Ed Zwick films and a pretty darn good book by, uh, I think the author's name is Jim Harrison. So you should check out the book, Legends of the Fall, and you should check out the movie. It was like a 1994 movie, it's kind of old, but I guarantee you, you'll enjoy it if you watch it. All right, let's get into the cocktail. First thing we're gonna do is, let's say five drops of allspice dram. Uh, just like one dash, I'm kind of getting low on my Angostura Snero Bitter. So I did it a couple of times, but it's like, that is like, we're equating one dash. I think I just actually ran out on this cocktail. Uh, we're gonna do one heaping bar spoon of um, Velvet Flarenum. And I will say, I don't necessarily think you should be uh, measuring in a bar spoon unless you know what the volume is. One bar spoon is about half a teaspoon. So if you know that the, uh, I guess, cup size of the spoon or the spoony part of the spoon is uh, half a teaspoon, then you, sh you can do it with a spoon, but you could also just pull out half a teaspoon. Anyway, we're gonna be doing a little bit over that because we're gonna be doing a heaping bar spoon. So we're gonna be like, but, but what that means is letting it bubble up over a little bit. Half an ounce of 100 proof bonded rye. We're using Rittenhouse. An ounce and a half of Applejack. Also 100 proof, also bonded and give it a nice stir. I like to build these in the glass, but some people say that they think that it is better to build it in a stirring glass and pouring it over a rock of ice. It's a little more elegant uh, that way for some people. And if you are in that camp, I think that you should just go do that. I, I fully support your decision to chill in a mixing glass and pour over a rock. I like to just build it in the glass because it just takes a step out. It's a little easier. I found a sticker on here and that irritates me when they're on there. Should have, should have caught it earlier. All right, and then we're just gonna pull off an orange peel. Nice one. And we're gonna pull off a lemon peel. Ooh, it's a nice one too. I like it. And then give it a nice spritz. All right, let's take a sip of this. Oh yeah, it's good. Oh yeah, it's, you've got the Applejack. The rye really brings up the spice. Um, the allspice, you know, just those few drops of allspice. So if you have the allspice in a bitters dasher, I would just say do a dash and I, or, or I would do like four to six drops. I think I did six. Um, you don't want to overdo an allspice. Allspice is a, is a very, very, very robust flavor. It is, it can, it could easily overtake things. Um, so that little bit really goes a long way. You get a little bit of spice from the Angostura and bitterness. It's like nutty. It is spicy. It's full flavored. Uh, it reminds me of a fall day. That's what it reminds me of. It reminds me of cold weather where I grew up in Boston. It just reminds me of that like nice. October was like one of my favorite months because it was like starting to get cold, sort of chilly, not super chilly, sweater weather, but like, you know, you get the rosy cheeks and a little rosy nose, the leaves are falling and changing color. Um, and you just like, no, like it marks the season. Here in LA, we don't have such luxuries. Uh, but when I can make this cocktail, I can, Definitely uh, have have that feeling, have that nostalgic memory in a glass at least. So there you have it, my friends, the legend of the fall. So for our very last cocktail, I wanted to do for you uh, a cocktail called the Garden State Julep, which was created by a guy named Jared Schubert of the Monkey Wrench in Louisville, Kentucky. And what I like about this drink is a couple things. First of all, it is uh, kind of a play off a of champagne julep. The other thing that's really kind of great about this drink is that it utilizes uh, a lemon syrup called lemon sherbet. All right, so uh, let's get into the cocktail. First thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna add uh, a few little pieces of mint, and then we're gonna add three quarters of an ounce of the lemon sherbet. Give it a light muddle to just like express the oils. Then we're gonna add two ounces of apple jack and three ounces of rosé. Rosé of your choice, pick something that's dry and lightly sweet if you can. We're gonna add a little Scotia crushed ice in here. Uh, give it a light stir. Add a pinch of kosher salt. Stir it again, and combine. And then we're gonna pack this whole thing in crushed ice. What I like to do is actually push the cocktail down a little bit so that you kind of evenly distribute the ice through the drink. And then uh, we're gonna do like a little, we're gonna, try, we're gonna try a new garnish, guys, and I may fail at this, and then it will be like, oh, do we reshoot it? 
But you know what? I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna pre-poke a hole into a raspberry. You wanna do like a little mint and let's say red berries for the garnish and like a little lemon flag. Like, so how do you, what do you think, Marius? Is that clunky? Let's take a sip of this. Oh yeah, that's, that's great. You get that lemon, you know, you want to do a rosé that's not going to dominate. I know that, you know, I mean, obviously rosé kind of tastes like rosé. It's going to be kind of light and dry, but what's great about this Listel that I picked is that you taste the rosé, but then you also taste that lemon. It's dry, but like the sweetness kind of drives through the dryness and you also get a really nice sense of that Applejack that's in there. It doesn't, you know, not one element is overtaking the other. It's all sort of in concert together. And really that's the ultimate goal of cocktails is to sort of balance all those flavors so that you kind of taste them all together and then also individually at the same time, if that makes sense. You can taste all the different components, but you can taste how they play together. And then you can also taste what they are contributing to the whole flavor profile. So what is Applejack and where did it come from? Quite simply, Applejack is American apple brandy. Uh, it was first created by colonists who would freeze distill it. And that was known as jacking. So basically what that is, is they would take a barrel of cider, they would let it ferment and then stick it outside in the winter time and the freezing weather would freeze all of the water content and it would condense all the alcohol into the center. And then you had this very high proof condensed alcohol liquid center. Uh, the problem with doing something like that is that it not only condenses the alcohol and the flavors, but it also condenses all of the impurities, methanol, and fusel alcohol. And those, uh, methanol is not fit for consumption. It is toxic. Uh, and when people would drink this, not only would they probably get the worst hangover of their lives, they would also, it, for people who consumed it a lot, it led to a condition called apple palsy, which was this wobbly muscle kind of malady that would happen. Uh, it was very, very unhealthy. So in 1698, a guy named William uh, Laird uh, emigrated to Monmouth County, New Jersey from Scotland. He was believed to be a uh, distiller by trade. He looked around at the most uh, abundant product that he had in the area, which were apples. I think he was actually quoted as saying that the apples, like nobody ate the apples. They weren't like great eating, but they made good cider. And so he decided to distill that since he knew how to distill properly. Uh, you know, when you do that <laughs> proper distillation, those, all of those uh, impurities are kind of cast aside in a very, like very easily. And then he made that first product. Uh, it was a very, it was such a uh, popular and important product that even George Washington tried to get his recipe at one time. Then in the 1980s, the Laird's company kind of fell on hard times and they started having to diversify their holdings and make some other types of spirits because not a lot of people were using Applejack. And literally this company got saved by the kind of resurgence in cocktails and classic cocktails. And they became so popular that their bonded Applejack, which is the four year 100 proof Applejack that I use on my videos, it actually wasn't available because it all got bought up and it needed to age for four years. And so for four years, we were just out of it and they had to make a hundred proof non-bonded version to uh, meet uh, supply, uh, to meet demand, uh, or so that their supply met demand. Uh, anyway, there you have it. Um, that everything that I know about Applejack in sort of a rambly kind of way, that's fine. I know you guys are used to it at this point. Um, so if you like our channel, please hit like and subscribe and check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash the educated barfly. We have some awesome content there. Uh, a couple of videos. There are a few video series there that don't come to YouTube. So you should check them out if you're interested. And we will see you guys on another time. I hope you guys enjoy this lovely classic collection of fall cocktails. I'll see you guys later.